as President-elect Joe Biden continues to reveal who he will be appointing to, as, to his administration, Israel is watching closely. Who will be the next American Secretary of State and how will that impact the Middle East? But more importantly, what kind of relationship will the current Israeli administration have with Biden after such close ties with Trump? Well, joining us to break this down and more is former Israeli Justice Minister Dr. Yossi Balin, who was also the lead negotiator of the Oslo Accords. So let's begin with the first big question here, Yossi. Is a Biden presidency positive for the state of Israel? It depends on whom you are, are you talking to. Right. I mean, for the right, it's bad news. They had a president who did whatever the evangelists in the United States wanted. And uh, for this time in history, it was uh, very close to what uh, Netanyahu wanted or the, the right in Israel uh, wanted. It is not that he was close to Israel or something like that. Uh, he was, more than anything uh, else, an ignorant. He began by saying, if you remember, one state, two states, you decide all these things. Israel will pay for all the, the weapons we give it, and, and so on and so forth. And then he said other things. Biden, uh, whom I've known for the last uh, 28 uh, years, is knowledgeable about the, the conflict, knows the people who were negotiating, knows the right and the left, know the, knows the main problems. And he is a, a real supporter of Israel. He told me once when we met, for me, Israel, the love for Israel begins in my stomach. It goes to my heart and eventually ends in my head. And this is very typical. I mean, I did not uh, ask him, of course, uh, where does it go right. with you? But he, he found it important to, to tell something like that uh, to me. Uh, it is important for him to, to for him to achieve peace, it, and and I believe that the main problem is how high is it on his agenda. Right, right and now. that's actually what I want to ask you. I mean, Trump clearly, by the end of his presidency, at least, made Israel one of his top mm -hmm. priorities. How much attention can we expect Biden to actually pay to Israel right now and the Middle East as a whole, given all the challenges that he's facing going into the White House? You know, coronavirus, obviously, rising tensions with China are just some of those issues. In his team, people are telling him. Uh, Mr. President-elect, forget it. I mean, don't even think about entering this uh, swamp. It is endless. Your president, your, your predecessors, uh, all failed, and uh, don't, and it will it will not be a, a winning uh, option for you. It doesn't mean necessarily. I mean, this is for sure. I mean, this is happening right now as we talk. Now. I believe that there will be others who might tell him that there is an opportunity, if there is an opportunity. So it, 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 what is important is who is leading Israel, of course, who is leading the Palestinians, and what, are the, the, what is the environment which may be conducive to, to an agreement. I think that if he feels that there is an opportunity to succeed, he will not hesitate. Well, what kind of approach do you think that he is going to take when it comes to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict at this point? I, I believe that some of the very stupid decisions of, of uh, Trump, uh, like closing down the Palestinian uh, office in Washington, which was totally unneeded, or uh, cutting the, the budget for uh, mutual uh, operations uh, or, or cultural uh, activities of Israelis and Palestinians, why, why did he do that? I mean, all these things, I believe, uh, will be uh, changed and put in place. But this is not going to change history. The question is whether he wants to have a real impact, a real legacy, and if he is ready to go for what, let us say, President Carter went in, in 77, okay. 78. Well, you know, obviously we've seen major steps in the past year towards peace with other Gulf Arab states, the UAE, Bahrain, and then of course Sudan. Is there still hope for peace between the Israelis and Palestinians given the tensions, the strained relationship between Ramallah and Washington at this point? Well, he, the, the change, the change in, in Washington is very important because the Palestinians in many ways put themselves in the corner while saying we will talk only under international uh, umbrella, uh, we will not talk to the Americans if they don't say no to annexation. For Biden to say no to annexation, I mean, it is like eating breakfast. 
it's, I mean, it is not a big deal for him. So they, I, I hope, will change the attitude. And we say, okay, we are ready to work with the Americans, to talk to the Americans, of course, and uh, to renew the negotiations with Israel, is either directly or through them. So the, the mere fact that Biden was elected already helps the, at, at least, I hope, the, the Palestinians to change their policy. Now, I'm interested to know how you think the current Israeli administration is going to receive Biden. Obviously, Trump and Netanyahu had a very close relationship. Netanyahu wasn't necessarily the biggest fan of Obama, and many from the right view Biden as, you know, the next Obama. How do you think this is going to play out in terms of relations between the two administrations? I think that Bibi will do whatever he can in order to be nice to uh, to Biden and to say to him, you know, I had to do what I did, I had to say what I said because of Trump, you know him, but actually I love you. And uh, the question is whether Biden will uh, buy it, or, uh, and, and what would be the attitude of Biden towards uh, Netanyahu? Knowing Biden, but then I, I know that he is not vindicative and, and will not search for, for areas in which he can uh, somehow uh, uh, vindicate and take revenge right. or whatever against uh, Netanyahu, but this will not be the same kind of relation. So quick answer on this before we have to go out for a break. President Trump is nearing his end in office here. Are there any surprises in store for the Middle East? Pompeo is going to be in the region in the next week. In the, in the coming in, uh, two months? Yes, yeah, in the coming two months. You never know with Trump. I don't want to guess. All right, well, with that, that's it. No guesses? No guesses. No way. <laughs>